What is going on guys? Sean here again, Fate Brotherhood. This is um, uh, another vlog. Sorry I have been AFK or just like gone yeah, kind of kind of like eh, for these past couple of days or like weeks or whatever the fuck has happened because oh man guys, college. I love it at the same time I hate it. At my college they actually set up a zip line for as a fair like thing. Like you could start from one side of the campus and end up on the other one. They told me I couldn't set it up so I can go to my classroom because apparently that's dangerous. Ah, oh, fuck. But it was fun. Yeah. Anyway, so I've been kind of busy lately with schoolwork and all this stuff. My tests are starting to come. It's October. All you motherfuckers in college know these are like your midterm exams. And then, like, well, at least maybe your first or second exams have already come up or now they're starting to come up. And then November, oh, my God. Shit gets real in November. And then December, eh, final exams. You you should have been, like, paying attention this whole semester. This one. But anyway, guys, as you can see by the title of the video, I'm talking about how I almost almost sadly, met Misashi Kishimoto. And it wasn't at Comic-Con or anything like that, because apparently he was doing panels over there too. He was apparently doing bookstore signings at uh, certain places. There was a Barnes & Noble in Manhattan that I went to on Saturday? Yeah, it was Saturday. Yeah, so I went there with um, two of my friends. My friend Robin. Yeah, he's cool. Um, and my friend Dave. Yeah, I'm worried about Dave sometimes, but still. Yeah, so um, Robin was the one who told me that Masashi Kishimoto would be signed. Masashi Kishimoto, if you don't fucking know, he is the creator of Naruto, guys. The man who has created, like, what, 15 years of my life into epic-ass awesomeness. Like, there's, I don't, wait, was it 15? It was more, it's more than a decade, I know that much. I don't know when I started not watching Naruto, but I remember what episode of Naruto I started watching, but... Yeah, Masashi Kishimoto has fucking effect. Just as much as Akira Toyama has. The, those motherfuckers, they are like equal level here for me. Because these motherfuckers created all this shit. Like, yeah, equal levels. But yeah, Masashi Kishimoto is the creator of Naruto. He, he's the guy who creates the manga and all this stuff. He was the one who came up with the idea and all that. And I had to fucking meet him. I had to. He, in fact, he, uh, anime has affected my life so much, guys. You have heard this in these videos. I love anime, guys. I fucking love everything about it. And these, I've learned more lessons. Urgh, what is that? Okay, so something just tried to kill me in my throat. I don't know, but still. Uh, anyway, I have too much... Anime has, like, affected my life in ways that... I, I've learned more lessons from anime than anywhere else I could ever learn from. School taught me some things because I was, like, a naive-ass kid. I, I'm still naive as fuck, guys. I, I still believe in the whole treat people the way you want to be treated. I take that fucking to heart. I treat every one of my friends and everyone I meet, even the random strangers, the way I want to be treated. And that is where I, I'm fucking... I'm, it worked nice for me. Everyone seems to, like, think no one has tried to kill me yet. That's basically... If it, if no one's trying to kill you, it's working, okay? But still. Then, the whole... Th I, oh, man, I've learned so many life lessons. I had to, I grew up, basically, alongside Naruto as he's been on this journey and all this stuff. Now, granted, I stopped reading the manga around in middle school, mostly because they, I never bought any of the mangas. Um, I usually went to the library in my neighborhood to go, like, t rent out books, and I would take them home and read them. But I had to stop going to the library because kids started smoking pot inside the library, and my mom said I can't go anymore. I was a little kid, guys. I had no say in the matter. Anyway, so I ended up stopping watching the manga, but I loved the anime. I kept watching the anime. It was on Toonami. It was on... It was on Toonami, it was on Cartoon Network a little bit, then it went to Disney XD, oh fuck those guys, they kind of nerfed the shit out of that, that was when Shippuden was coming out, but yeah, oh man, I fucking love the anime, I stopped reading the manga, because the anime was just so, I, I was enthralled by that, look at that big ass def um, vocabulary word right there guys, enthralled, I was enthralled by this fucking show, it had me by the fucking neck, and I wanted to keep watching and keep watching it, Every Thursday, it made me so happy because that's when the new, a new episode would come out. Except for right now when it's in the filler arc. But still, every Thursday, I always had an anime to look forward to. When Dragon Ball Z ended, Naruto was always there for me. That was, it was fucking amazing. Anyway, so, as I said before, Robin was the one who told me about this whole, uh, Dragon, um, not Dragon Ball Z thing. Oh, man, that, that's gonna piss a lot of people off who love Naruto and I say Dragon Ball Z. No. Robin was the one who told me about this whole Naruto thing and he was asking me if I wanted to go with him. I was like, fuck yeah! I wanted to go. And... Oh, man, I kind of, yeah, see, <laughs> me and Paul have, like, strict-ass, like, uh, rules in our family and stuff, because got an overprotective paranoid mother who'd probably kill us all if we <laughs> if we stepped even one foot out of line. Oh, man, you should hear Paul's stories of the hell he's gotten, because he's a rebellious child. Me, I try to stay, I, I've done nothing wrong. I'm the second. I'm, I am what is considered the good child. I would like to think I have done nothing wrong. But still, yeah, so I kind of left without telling her that day. I didn't even, I, I woke up a little bit late, and um, so I had to meet my friends up later. 
Because I sleep like till 12, guys. It's my fault for that. But yeah, then, so yeah, there was going to be some hell when I came back. So I tried to stay out the entire day. I wanted to meet Masashi Kishimoto. I was going to stay there till the fucking end of time until I met this motherfucker. We got to this Barnes & Noble in the city. There, we found out that, oh, oh yeah, right there, I bought this special limited edition book. Yes, New York City Comic Con exclusive edition. Apparently these were being given out at Comic Con. They were be given. Um, I bought this in the bookstore, and then I bought like one of the last three. I got there when it was only one of the last fucking three guys, and then after that there was only reserved copies for people who apparently were waiting in line to meet Masashi Kishimoto. That's where I get the almost part. People were waiting online to meet Masashi Kishimoto since Wednesday fucking night. The event was Saturday. Wednesday night. How could... How? How? It was raining on some of these days. There was... A dog could have chewed off one of their legs. All this stuff could have happened, but they stuck it out. Because, okay, maybe... I don't know, guys. I have a life. I have a life. I live in a bad neighborhood. There's ghettoness all around here. When it's 8 o'clock and it's dark outside, I'm in my fucking house. I don't know about anyone else. I that's, that's why I can't hang out with my friends as much as I want to. This is why Saturday was a very important day for me, because I got to actually go out and hang with my friends for a, at least once, because I, I live, I'm live the only one who lives far as uh, far away from them. All my other friends, they le at least live in the neighborhood of where my college is, so they can all um, still hang out and stuff, and they always tell me, why why is the shot here and all this stuff, and then I'm not here because I have fire. Uh, ah, it's all right. But anyway, Masashi Kishimoto... They were, everyone already had these wristbands and shit. Like, I was, it was a green ass wristband. And then you had a purple one if you reserved the book as well, basically. And if you got a green one, I was about to highlight my motherfucking hand to get in on that line. Because only 110 people could get there. Apparently Wednesday night, there was already 80 people there. Like, what the fuck? I don't know, guys. And then, uh, me and my friend Robin, we were just so sad. Dave, Dave had no hope. Dave gave no fucks because he he's not a hopeful person like I. I'm the optimist. And Dave was somewhat of a realist, I guess, because he he was not he basically lowered his expectations of meeting Masashi Kishimoto so he wouldn't feel that like heartbroken like me and Robin did. But we were distraught, man. I was just glad I got the book, because apparently this thing sold out very fucking fast. Robin got his copy. I got my copy. Dave did not want a copy because he didn't know whether or not he was. He was like he was like crushing, and he was like enjoying our our sadness, guys. It was just uh, you know. What, let me show this a little bit more to you guys. So yeah, this is the Naruto book thing. This is the side part to it. Naruto. It says in its exclusive edition, so I'm hoping it's really exclusive or something like that. I think this is like a printed version. Like no, printed version of Masashi Kishimoto's like uh like his signature and shit. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, as for the book, I could just do like a bedtime story and read this to you guys in a video. That'd be pretty fucking cool, right? <laughs> oh man, guys, but I don't know what to say. It was, I really want to meet him. I have so, I record, I took like a whole bunch of pictures. Like I tried to, since I couldn't meet Masashi Kishimoto, um, we left, we went to get some food because we knew that we were going to meet him. Everyone was already lining up and stuff. There were some people who didn't get tickets, so they were chilling to the side and stuff like, because they wanted to meet him, but they were locking off the area, so... We left, we got something to, well, actually, we didn't even get something to eat. We were just too sad. We were just walking around the city. Then, at, when it was 3.30, that's the time the event starts, right? I was like, you know what, fuck it. We came all this way, and we're getting the fuck back in there. My friend Robin was like, oh, man, shot. I don't know. We should just go. Dave was already halfway into the subway, and then I was just like, no, man, we came all this fucking way. We're going back. If you ask them, and you can, well, depends, I might... I might just sell them out and give out their, like, personal information on the internet. But who knows? But still, I was the one who told them that we're getting the fuck back there. I talked Robin into it. He was so sad and stuff. But we got fucking back there, and we saw Masashi Kishimoto. He was signing stuff. He was getting poster in his badass gloriness. I walked in there, and I felt his presence. Like, I knew I wanted to give this man a motherfucking hug. But I could not. Because then the poli they were, he had bodyguards. This is how important this motherfucker is. You guys don't understand. He had bodyguards. So there was only one thing I could do. I had two plans. One, I take one for the team. I give my book to Dave. And, and Robin has his book, right? So I tackle the nearest security guard. And I fight as many of them as I can, distracting them. While Masashi Kishimoto is over there just signing stuff. Dave and Robin would go over to the side. Get their book signed. Like, out of, like just like just pop up online. They just have to get online and just pretend that they belong there. And then after that, they as soon as they get their um robin gets his book signed dave helps get my book signed they come back they find me and then just say that i have some type of like 
like uh i was beaten as a child that's why i have some problems i have to, like all these psychological issues and and yeah it could be true so i had a mental breakdown all this stuff i was so and en like enamored to see my hero and all this shit so that that way the police won't rest arrest me <laughs> or maybe they'll send me to a mental hospital for all we know but it's still it's better than going to jail anyway that was the plan a plan b was that we lift one of us up and do like a pyramid type shit where we're like like fucking cheerleaders and stuff and then we we like get him to notice us he sees that we're trying so very fucking hard to get his attention and stuff and then he'll call us over but the problem was that i was i was too heavy uh dave he could well we could have lifted dave but uh robin has no upper body strength but then we lifted up robin trying i had to try to support this motherfucker dave was holding up by his leg robin is tall by the way so it was even worse so dave was holding him up i'm trying to keep this motherfucker from falling back and he's taking as many pictures as possible but oh man Hisashi, miss sashi kishimoto was not able to notice us because he was too busy like just signing stuff he was taking he took time to talk to each of the fans well i think like he had a translator with him so yeah each of the fans were just talking they were just like so happy to meet him they just said what they really loved about him which is what i fucking love guys i love to see more people who love anime just as much as we do however i would just wish i was part of that like 110 people to get there i was just so jealous of all them. they were getting signed posters and stuff for him too people like um was handing in their like signed draw um like their own drawings to him like their own anime drawings and he took them like like smiling too like he was just so happy to see that kind of stuff <laughs> why didn't i get to see it? anyway guys i'll show you guys some videos of um everything that we did like uh, well just like the video i took of me trying to like get him in the background of like like, I was trying to photo, I was just trying to get him into the background of all this shit. I was just, like, trying to, like, do a selfie with him in the background. I got his elbow for sure. It was, like, the greatest thing ever. I got Masashi Kishimoto's elbow. I also zoomed in on his face, too, just, like, while he was signing stuff. But, ah, uh, man, I wish I got to meet him. Yeah, yeah, I heard exactly. Yeah. 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 It's him in the background. This is Dave. Hello. Movie star Dave. I'm Dave. And this is also Robin. Hey, I'm gonna go put this up on my YouTube channel. You wanna see? Hey. Yes. Us meeting. Well, we didn't get Not to exactly meet. Meeting. We didn't get to technically meet him because it was only first 110 people. So. I think if you're like. Uh... <laughs> At least I got to see him. Apparently, this is his first time in America. That that was first time. Well, maybe first time after like Naruto has ended. But apparently this was his first time in America, and that was that's probably a very good time to go see him. I might not ha get a chance like this in the next time in my life. For, for whatever fucking reason, things, shit happens, guys. I might not have gotten another chance. I made sure I at least got to see him once. That that was my thing. Apparently, while, apparently these events were also so sold out because he was only doing signings at... He wasn't even doing signings at Comic-Con, guys. That's what I heard. He had a panel at Comic-Con, but he wasn't doing signings. So all these, like, the days that he was doing these events, that's when he would sign shit. Know what? That explained that explained so much as to why so many people were there. Anyway, so this is the final novel of it. So I can't even read this yet because I only watched the anime. As I said, I stopped reading the manga only because I was watching the anime and I couldn't go back to my ghetto-ass library where they were smoking weed. But now, I stopped reading the manga and i even though it's in the filler arc i just want to watch naruto all the way through to the end guys i want to watch the anime finish it first they already dubbed the last movie that is fucking bullshit it ain't over yet and they dubbed it that is fucking stupid anyway i just i can't read this yet robin robin read the manga he loves reading the manga um he didn't he, he doesn't actually watch the anime too so he actually he loves anime he loves the manga version i love the anime version so that's how it was and and then all this shit all this stuff like i there's so much in here i can't read i can go through like the first like um page in the book let me just show you guys this um i don't know if you guys can read that let me just get a little bit closer oh damn it the light is oh wait okay there we go this is uh this is the final volume thank you so very much for the support for your support these past 15 years i knew it 15 years i'd be honored in the future occasionally recall if you rec occasionally recall that there was a character named naruto well then, please enjoy the conclusion of Naruto, Masashi Kishimoto, 2015. Ah, oh, man, motherfucker. Let us give us some backstory on Masashi Kishimoto. Author slash artist Masashi Kishimoto was born in 1974 in rural... I'm going to go like this. In rural Okayama Prefecture, Japan. After spending time in art college, he won the Hop Step Award for New Manga Artist with his manga Karakuri me Meca Mechanism. Oh, that's what it's called. Kishimoto decided to base his next story on traditional Japanese culture. His first 
version of Naruto drawn in 1997 was one short story about Fox Spirits. His final version, which de debuted in Weekly Shonen Jump in 1999, quickly became the most popular ninja manga in Japan. Oh my fucking god. And there's a spot where it's like Naruto and... I think that's Iruka, yeah. It's Naruto and Iruka just chilling at um, I Ichiraku's. Oh man, I want some ramen now. And then there's... Ah... Oh. Mm. <laughs> I turned the page and there's more too like stuff. It says it's the final chapter and stuff. And there's a picture here I can't show you in case you don't read the manga and you just watch the anime like me, because then it's gonna spoil stuff for you guys. I don't want to do that. So ah oh, man, I'm trying to keep this book in as good condition as possible. This is just I, I just want to keep this thing preserved and all that stuff. So just go over here. It's okay. It's okay. Anyway. So, yeah, I almost got to meet Masashi Kishimoto. I'm going to input, like, the clips and shit of, like, I, I was trying to vlog with my phone. I don't really have a vlogging camera. Like, that. if I had a good camera, I'd probably be using it better than this thing. Because I know you guys don't like the quality on this stuff. But, yeah, I would have, I was so, we were kind of sad. To not, and then we couldn't, we couldn't even get him on his way out, like, to talk to him. Because he took down a secret emergency elevator for, like, MVPs and all that shit. So, yeah, we couldn't see him anyway. But at least me and Robin got our books. We got to see him. I thanked I thanked the hell out of Robin for that. Cause, and he was just like getting sick of me thanking him all the time. Because I was just like, yo, he if he hadn't told me about that, I would never have done. So thank you, Robin, for all that shit. Dave, thank you for accompanying. Dave was our tour guide. Because he's the only one who actually goes in the city that often. I don't go into the city that often because it's like, it's fucking three hours away from me. And then all that. Like, Dave, thank you for being our tour guide. Robin, thank you for telling me about the event. I'm thanking my friends right now because that was like... It was seriously a great ass moment for me, guys. I just got to see him. I got a, an exclu exclusive book. It has like this. Look at this beast ass picture of just Naruto on the cover, guys. Look at that. Wait, I might just like do it like this. Okay, yeah, like this. Look at that. It looks so fucking cool. I can't even describe the coolness of this right now. Oh man, guys, it's just. I'm not gonna cry. I'm, I'm not. It's just my eyeballs are sweating. Okay. Oh man. Hmm. He's got a wild sense of humor, Naruto. <sighs> this stuff, and they, oh, I'll show you the back of it too. Like it has like a drawn picture of like what a human version of I guess of uh, Naruto and Sasuke. I'm trying to get the light like good and perfect right there. Yes, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, guys, yes, Naruto, the final volume. Yeah, that is a great book. I'm just gonna keep that forever. Ah, <sighs> that was. It felt good, guys. It really felt good. I just hope I can do that for Akira today. I wanted to go to New York Comic Con this year. Who the fuck knew you have to buy Comic Con tickets in advance, guys? Months in advance! You can't... And when they were selling them online, you... You bastards! You guys who buy more tickets than you actually need, you sell that shit on, like, eBay and stuff for $600! You are monsters! Business monsters, mind you, but still monsters! So, ah, oh, fuck. I wanted to go to Comic Con because apparently Sean Schimmel was there. Fucking Chris Sabbath, Vegeta, and Goku were there, and I did not get to fucking meet them. I fucking want shit. I really wanted to see them and all that stuff, but oh well. I just hope that Misashi Kishimoto, thank you for all you've done with creating this story, creating great characters, and teaching me so many lessons that no one, no person on this earth could ever teach me the lessons that you ever taught in this fictional creation. This is Naruto is more a part of me. Than most things in real life. This to me is just as real as like going to school and stuff. Because this is educational as a motherfucker. This is edu This is the perfect example of education. It's got violence. It's got learning lessons. It's got family matters. It's got possible drugs. I don't know what's in those sensu beans or not sensu beans. Uh, what's it called? The pill things that they eat. The it's it's like little brownish pill. Like they showed in an episode of Naruto. Where they were just like it was like the food pills, yeah, basically. It's like it's ver it's their version of kind of sensu beans. It's just like to keep them hungry and shit. It's got it's got food. It's got culinary skills like a motherfucker. It's got cultural things like a motherfucker. It's got spiritual things like a motherfucker. This anime had so much, guys. It has affected me just as much as DBZ has. And you guys have seen my channel. You know how much DBZ shit is up there. You know how much that has affected me. Ah, I'm just so happy. I just wanted to tell you guys this because it was such a great moment. I'm sorry if this, this is probably a day after when I'm doing this video because um, I just I just wanted to take it all in, guys. It was, ah, I really want, I'm glad I got to like at least see him. That was, that was pretty cool for me. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode or at least this vlog that I did. Like, 
I just wanted to let you guys know what I did over this um, over the weekend. I just wanted to show you guys that I'm not just being lazy here, but most of the time, but still. And I hope you guys like also like you just you fucking enjoy this like thing. I, and if you guys saw Masashi Kishimoto there, it was at it was on Saturday. It was a 3:30 to 4:30 event. It was in a Barnes and Nobles. If you guys were there, I was there also. So if you guys didn't see me or anything like that, it's all right. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Oh, well, actually, no. I'm not going to end this off right now. I'm just going to tell you guys some things. So, as of right now, I'm also start. I'm still doing my Xenoverse Let's Play with Boo Jr. Boo motherfucking Jr. And I'm also starting up Budokai 3's Battle Arena. That's what's going I, I kept mess. I, when I was doing the videos, I was doing some tongue twister shit in there. It was messing up. So, I'm, the reason I'm going back to Budokai 3 was, one, that game is fucking awesome. So, don't question that. And then, there was, um, for Battle Arena, that's where you get to choose a character, level him up, and you get to choose, um... Well, yeah, as you keep fighting through and through each of the characters, you keep leveling them up, you get your health. It's basically the first, I guess, start of Xenoverse, basically. Like, this is where the idea came from, of leveling up characters and shit. So that is what, that's what I'm doing right now. Mo mostly because that motherfucker, Paul, decided to challenge me to Battle of Brothers in Budokai 3. But he said my character, I have no character that is le even started up. And so he called me a bitch for that, and he wants to fight me for that shit. So he has his own character that he's leveling up. I have my own character that I'm going to be leveling up and showing you guys the progress of this motherfucker, and you're going to see who, how badass he becomes. I'm not telling you which character it is, because you got to go watch the video for that one. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys join me for that. I still will be doing some Xenoverse with Boo Jr. Uh, yes, and then there's Battle Arena. When Fallout 4 comes out, I definitely want to let's play that. Because I hope you guys will join me for that one. I hope you guys will watch that with me. Because I, I really fucking... Fallout is a great-ass game, guys. It's creepy as a motherfucker. You'll get to see me, like, cry like a bitch because that's how scary that shit is. And then it's a great... I'm, I know it's going to be a great-ass game. So I hope you guys join me for that as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys continue to love anime just as much as i do manga anime if you don't read the manga and you watch the anime you're just like me if you read the manga you don't watch the anime you're just like robin it doesn't fucking matter we all love the creation of these things and we all come together to be fucking awesome guys anime brings people together any motherfucker in the political system who's ever said get rid of anime fuck it you Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave a like and a favorite. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys will uh, comment below whether or not... How, how has Naruto affected you guys? Like, because for me, it, it taught me life lessons. It, it's, I've watched Nar I've grown alongside Naruto. I'm 19 now. It, it's just like, I've grown... It, it, there's no way to describe this. I feel like this is so much a part of me. It has been through every phase of my life. Dragon Ball Z was kind of already finished... By the time I was uh, born, basically. And then Naruto was always there to fill that gap that was left behind after Dragon Ball Z was over. Naruto was always there. And it didn't just... I'm not making it seem like it was like a, a fallback anime. Like I just put... Like I rested my shoulders up. No, this was like its own fucking stature. And just as much as DBZ was, they're on their equal levels and shit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please leave a like and a favorite. Um, I will continue to do more videos. I'm sorry for being gone for so long, guys. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. And as always, guys, stay gold. Peace!